Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are playing with a whole bunch of new makeup including the new Clay de Peau, the foundation, we have the Hermes Holiday Nail Polish, new Shade and Illuminate highlighters from Tom Ford, uh, a whole bunch of different stuff. We also have one of the YSL Holiday Eyeshadows. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna kind of do this sort of as a get ready with me style as I try on all these products. And for the most part, most of these are going to be first impressions. And then we're gonna go over my thoughts and swatches. All right, so we're going to start off with my usual bases. We've got the Surat Perfectionist Primer. This is a new tube that I opened, I think like last week. And um, just use one pump. And for eyes, the Viseart Seamless Eye Primer. And this just makes everything very smooth, but it is transparent. All right, so for foundation, I really splurged this time. I have never tried a super pricey foundation before, and with Clay de Peau's The Foundation that just came out, you know, the new one, I had to try it. You know, I have wanted to try it like La Prairie and stuff for a long time, but they don't have a shade match for me. So I ordered the Clay de Peau. This is my most expensive foundation to date. Honestly, like even before opening it, I can tell you right now, I don't plan on spending this much on foundation <laughs> probably ever again, but <laughs> you never know. We'll see how amazing this is. So it does come wrapped in plastic. I ordered this directly from the Clay de Peau website. So let me open this up and then I will share it with you. So here is the box. You can see it's a pretty large box. It's only a one ounce product, just like other foundations, but the box itself is pretty large. So it's called the Foundation N. It says, define your most radiant, most colorful life. An ultra luxurious foundation that optimizes skin's naturalness for a radiantly youthful new beauty that reveals a new dimension of skin and provides a feeling of sheer delight. So at the top we have this, which is kind of this like, it's plastic, but it's got like this marbly appearance to it. And then we have more cardboard. So that's a piece of this. In here, it looks like a spatula. Yep. Lift some more cardboard. And then inside, we have the actual foundation jar. So pretty large box, <laughs> but this foundation here, according to the back of the box, it has Blur Perfection Technology EX. So that's supposed to enhance the skin looks firmer, in quotation marks, by optimizing the effect of light to blur skin concerns, even the skin surface, and provide it with a lustrous finish. It also has, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce this, but Precious Lakesis Complex, which is an exclusive ingredient to Clay de Peau that is supposed to improve the appearance of firmness and elasticity. And again, this is going to be a skincare makeup hybrid. It has the light empowering enhancer, which you find in a lot of Clay de Peau products that just gives you that more subtle radiance. And, and it does have a little bit of sunscreen. So you have 3.9% octanoxate and 3.3% titanium dioxide. So those are ingredients. It has an SPF 22 rating here. So I don't see a PAO anywhere on here. That's like your expiration once opened, but it does have the expiration for the product on a little label here. It's also on the bottom of the box. So if you are purchasing in store and you wanna make sure yours is fresh, it is on the outside of the box as well as here. Mine is 2024. All right, so let's take a second to just admire this. You have kind of this clear lucite over your 3D gold cap here. Open that up. I have shade I-10, which is my normal shade for Clay de Peau. And here is the actual foundation. So I'm gonna bring you in closer and let's test this out. All right, so before applying the actual foundation, I like to use concealer. This is the stick concealer or the concealer from Clay de Peau. So I'm just getting a little bit on my finger here. I like to warm it up there. And 
just going to use a little bit right now. I don't want to mask too much. I just want a little bit of coverage here right now. Uh, so you can really see the foundation shine today. So just going to add a little bit here. And for reference, I use shade Ivory, which is their lightest in the Clay de Poe concealers. But I do find them to be a little bit more beige yellow, a little bit deeper than I would like, which is why I always put those on underneath foundation. So I've got my little tray here for the spatula. And let's go ahead and, you know, I'm actually just going to use what's on the lid today, so I don't need the spatula. And I'm going to use the Refer 31 brush. I find this to be, got one of my hairs mixed in there, but I find this to be one of the most versatile foundation brushes. It's really great if you're not sure what kind of brush you want to use with a particular foundation. I like this because you've got the stippling hairs or you can kind of brush it on. So it kind of helps you decide what you want or what style brush works best with that. So just patting a little bit of this on right now. You can see that's going to give me light coverage there. And that's just using the stippling fibers here. So let's add a little bit more. This time we're going to brush some of this in. All right, so that's more medium coverage. Let me bring you in closer. All right, so here it is up close. You can see it's really giving me, there's a subtle radiance, but it's still a light to medium coverage. It's definitely not, you know, kind of obliterating my skin at all. I can see my skin through it. It just makes it look better. But yet I'm not covering everything either. So let's go ahead and do the other side. Okay, so this is the foundation. So I have to say, it feels really nice on the skin. It kind of sinks in like a moisturizer would. You don't actually feel like you have makeup on your skin. Um, I like it. So for blush today, I wanted to try Mob Beauty. So I have this one shade here. This is M73. You can see you've got kind of these two rectangles there that will fit into the packaging here. So this is the package and these, you know, obviously are reusable. One of the great things I like about this, oh, there's a little flip case here. So I like how these kind of fit into the slots. So snap that down, you've got your cover, but you can still see the name that on the bottom. So I, I really like that. I hate it when you put a refill in something and you have no idea what it is. I'm talking about lipsticks and everything else too. So I find that annoying, but let's go ahead and try this out. I, again, I, I like how they did their packaging. All right, so I kind of have to take back a little bit of what I said about the packaging. I really do like how you can see this through here, but look, I keep, this is a magnetic closure and I don't know, maybe it's just mine or maybe I don't have it clipped in properly, but I hear a clicking sound when I press down on this. And then when I go back to open it, it's kind of taking this cover with it. So not sure why that's happening. Um, but let's go ahead and try out the actual blush. And I believe this is recycled plastic. Uh, Mob Beauty is, you know, one of their goals is to like reduce waste and so forth. So let's go ahead and try this out. So very soft flush here. Just build it up a little bit more so you can see the color up 
better. This is definitely a buildable cream blush. Going on, it's uh, gonna be one of those like drier cream blush formulas, so it's not gonna feel like oily or greasy on the skin. And yeah, I'm gonna blend this out better, but here, this is the color. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit. This is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate in Intensity 0.5. I'm gonna add a little bit of this contour shade. I wiped off the mini base, but I'm gonna use that. And just gonna add a little bit of this kind of back here. And so I believe this product here has been reformulated. And if it's not reformulated, maybe this is a new shade. Honestly, I'm not really up to date on the shade and illuminates. Um, yeah, so I got this last week. So I've been kind of testing it out since then. Just taking my foundation brush, and kind of putting, blurring those together a little bit. And then uh, one thing I know has been reformulated are the new Tom Ford Shade and Illuminating Highlighter Duos. So there are four shades. I picked up three of the four. We're going to, you know what? Let's play with, let's play with one of them today. We're gonna play with this one. This one here is Peach Light. Really pretty here. So I think, let's see here. You know, I think maybe we're actually gonna use a little bit of this on top of the blush and a little bit over the blush. So I'm taking the soft cheek from Sonia G. We're gonna go into the deeper shade with this. And let's just get a little bit of this right on top of the blush here. Let me bring you in. So this is a soft fluffy brush. The product itself is more firmly pressed so you're not gonna get a ton of color from here, but you can see that this has a little bit more of a coppery glint to it. I will have a video on these and you'll be able to see these better then, but just wanted to kind of play with them a little bit right now. And you can see that definitely gives it a little bit of a coppery look to me. For the lighter shade, let's take the detail brush from Sonia G. And this looks kind of white at first, but it's not. It's really more of this like soft pinky peach. So we're just gonna get a little bit of this right here. Yeah, that's definitely more subtle. I like this color though. This is a really pretty shade. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's this lighter shade that I bought this particular palette for. I did not, ha I do not have any of the older ones of these, uh, but I believe the shade names, you know, are some of the same. I don't know if the colors are exactly the same. I've heard that the actual shades have been altered a little bit during the reformulation. I don't know how accurate that is. Now, moving on, we are taking a look at the YSL. This is one of the holiday shades. So this is one of the monos. This is the first Satin Crush eyeshadow I've picked up from them. This is 28, Unconforming Taupe. So let's take a look at this. And I purchased this from YSL. I haven't seen it anywhere else yet. Wow, look at this shade. I'm excited for this. Just gonna go ahead and take the Chikahoto KZ6. This brush is discontinued, but it is my favorite for like one on one and done's. And just taking the plastic off the mirror. Let's go see how this goes on. Wow, look at this color. I'm just gonna get a clean crease brush to kind of clean that area. This is the Hakahoto J5533. No shadow on here, just kind of gonna buff some of this a little bit. And on this eye, let's go ahead, we'll start off with this crease brush here, add a little bit to the crease, and we'll use a different brush and see if they look the same. take the Sonia G Worker Pro. So uh, the reason I want to test this style of brush, these shader brushes and being goat hair, they might make the finish look a little bit different because this is a firmer brush. 
So it's going to pick up more product and disperse it a little bit more strongly than the Kazan Squirrel Hair in the KZ6. And you can see this definitely gives you more of that metallic finish, whereas I had to build up the metallic finish a little bit more here. So let's go ahead and just even this out. To say, I really like this color. It looks more gray in the pan, but it's definitely taupe on the eyes and it's really pretty. So we're gonna go ahead and add some eyeliner to this as well. I've been using the Guerlain eyeliners a lot recently. I have two of them. I have the green one, uh, which is kind of like more of your light olive shade. And then I just bought this one, which is the night blue number three. So let's test this one out. All right, so I'm taking the pencil one from Sonia G. I'm gonna get just a little bit of the taupe and put this on the lower lash line. I'm gonna go back into Peach Light here. I'm gonna get some of this lightest shade again on the pencil one. And I'm just gonna add this to the inner corner of the eyes. For mascara, I'm going in with the Cure Weiss I'm Possible Mascara. I'm just gonna add this real quickly. For brows, I'm taking the Gucci pencil and this one is Shade Taupe. All right, so I decided I'm just gonna add a little bit of the highlight shade right here above the crease, kind of into the brow bone here. So for lips, let's go ahead and try this. This is 11 Triumphant Tawny. I opened this up to swatch it during my Clay to Poe video for the holiday collection, but I haven't actually worn it yet. So let's wear this one today. So this shade is in the permanent line in full size, but you can also pick it up as part of the holiday set the little mini lipstick set from clay to poe that has five shades and all five of them are permanent shades so it's a great way to try out shades if you are interested but you don't necessarily want to get a full size because these are expensive lipsticks for lip liner i'm just going to go around the edges here with the chanel lip liner in 162 nude brun all right, so that's it for the makeup. I also wanna share with you these nails. So I'm going to go ahead and go over swatches of everything we use and give you my first impressions on all of these items. And as for the Hermes nail polish, so it does come in your traditional Hermes box where you've got the orange pull-through packaging in here. And then the nail polish is in here. So this is the one that I picked up. This is a limited edition shade. This is 84 Griseta Metal. So this is what it looks like on my nails. I have a little clip here showing you the nail polish in natural light. And I just wanted to give you a couple thoughts on the formula. So first of all, the packaging on these, you know, it's adorable. The Hermes packaging is really nice. It's keeping in trend with all of the other Hermes products. I think it's a really nice nail polish. I actually really like the texture of it a lot. It has a little bit of a smoother, more vinyl texture going onto your nails than the Chanel or Dior polishes. It reminds me a lot of Mooncat. So Mooncat's an indie brand, if you have tried them before. They're not gonna have your traditional, you know, like cream colors like Hermes does. So if you're looking for like nudes and things like that, Mooncat won't have that, but these are slightly more sheer. So this is actually three layers of the Hermes. Mooncat, I typically have to wear three layers as well. I would say that the Mooncat though, it goes on more sheerly with your first layer and it builds 
kind of a lot with each layer, whereas the Hermes is gonna be a little bit more opaque than the Mooncat, but texturally they really feel very similar and then the nails for me. So uh, this shade here from Mooncat, this is called Cruel Mirage. Let's just see how this one compares. Okay, and just to show you, this is the Hermes brush. So I personally love these wide brushes. I think they make applying it definitely easier. But to say, these clips I'm showing you with my nails, I have not done any cleanup or anything. The Mooncat brush, again, is also gonna have your wider brush style and so forth. I have to say though, I do like the Hermes brush slightly better than the Mooncat one. These are the two shades. So this is Cruel Mirage from Mooncat, and this is the Grise Ton from Hermes. So kind of, they have some similarities. The Mooncat's gonna have more shimmer in there. There's also a touch more, like a little bit of an olive look to it. Not that it looks green in any way, but the undertones, there's a little bit more of an olive undertone in the Mooncat. So just wanted to give you an alternative brand. However, if you are looking for, you know, your more nude and, you know, your traditional cream colors without shimmer and sparkle, you know, this formula, similar to Mooncat, but it's gonna, Hermes will have those types of colors, your more traditional shades, whereas Mooncat, they're pretty much all sparkly. <laughs> so uh, definitely uh, both of them are great brands to try out, but the Mooncat is, I don't know, like a fourth of the price. So just something to think about. All right, so starting off with the actual base products, the Surat Perfectionist Primer, it's still my favorite. If you have oily skin or if you wear sunscreen, I like to wear a lot of sunscreen. So my skin always ends up being on the dewier side after skincare and sunscreen. This cancels it out without anything getting dry. It is fantastic. Favorite primer, I just realized I have two brand new open bottles, so it's gonna last me forever. It takes me about 10 months or so to go through a tube. And then the Viseart Seamless Eye Primer. This is another go-to product. This is a silicone-based primer. It's really just gonna smooth things out. So if you do have like wrinkly lids or anything, it helps the powders go on more smoothly, but it does not add any pigment. So let's move on to the foundation. So I gave you an introduction of this in the video. My actual thoughts on this, I think it's a nice foundation. As it's been sitting on my skin a little bit longer, I think it ends up having a little bit more of a powdery look than it does initially, like it dries a little bit. But again, this really feels more like skincare, so you don't feel any, uh, you know, like moistness or tackiness or anything like that. So this is the shade I-10, which is my normal shade. I just wanna compare this with the Radiant Cream Foundation. So this is the Radiant Cream Foundation from Clay de Peau. I have to say, this is a very expensive foundation as well, but nowhere nearly as expensive as the foundation. So these are both shade I-10. You can see that they really you know, hold true. The Clay de Peau is really good about making sure that their colors really do correspond well across the different product lines. And I would have to say this is gonna be more of your full coverage radiant foundation. It's definitely very glowy on the skin. This will give you full coverage. This new foundation here, if you are looking for something with light to medium coverage, this is really nice. It soaks into the skin. So, you know, it doesn't feel like you have anything there. It gives you a light to medium coverage. You can build it up. But I do think, you know, that I should have used a little bit less today. I feel I think it would have looked even better if I had gone lighter coverage with it. So overall, I like it so far, but I will have a video with this with final thoughts on this and a wear test and so forth as well. So these are the swatches after they've been sitting for a minute. You can see this is the foundation. This is the radiant cream. And you can see after oxidation, they're still pretty similar. The foundation, which has been on slightly longer, is just a little bit more peach, a little bit more golden peach compared to the Radiant Cream at this moment. And I forgot to mention, this is the concealer I used today. This is shade Ivory in the concealer. And you can see that it's gonna be a little bit deeper, a little bit more like tan beige in comparison with the I-10 shades. 
So it's a great formula though. You can really use just a, a tiny bit of this. You can layer it up and I think it performs really well. It's one of the best concealers on the market. And even though it's expensive, this will last for like not forever, but a very, very long time. It'll last years. And there is a reason that so many professional makeup artists keep these in their kits because it really performs that well. Next, we went in with the Mob Blush in M73. You can see I had no problems opening it that time, but yeah, some reason mine still gets stuck sometimes. It's like if I have a firm close, then it kind of gets stuck. Um, but I don't know. Maybe it's just the way I put mine in. Anyway, this is the shade M73. It is a cream formula. It has a nice texture. It's going to be not one of those like dewy creams. It's more of a drier cream and you can see it blends out well, gives you more of that like powdery finish when it blends out. But I have to say, I don't love it. Like you can even see just in the swatch that it looks a little patchy. Now I am obviously not a professional makeup artist and you know, I'm sure a professional makeup artist is going to do a much better job applying this than I did, but for the regular person doing their makeup, I don't know, I think these are okay. So again, this is my only one, so perhaps, you know, others are better, but I just think it's okay. So I'm probably not gonna pick up more of these. Next, I added just a little bit of this shade from Intensity 0.5 from the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. Let me just swatch that duo there so you can see the contour and the shimmer shade there. I've been using this a lot like off camera and this is still a little bit more yellow based than I would like. This is my first time trying Shade and Illuminate product in general. So overall though, I'm enjoying it and I think it's good. So I just wanted to use a little bit of that to kind of balance that blush today. But normally when I use that, I do it a little bit differently. So perhaps I'll show you that a, a, another time because I think, you know, it's more effective and looks better with a different application method than what I used today. But it's all an experiment. So just playing around. Then this is the Shade and Illuminate Highlighting Duos. So this one here is Peach Light and we used the coppery shade on the cheeks, on top of the blush, and the lighter shade on the inner corner and on the highlight portion. And yeah, you know, I could definitely use that as a shimmery blush, but it's a really nice deep shade that could work on the eyes as well, but it's this light shade here that is really more of a soft peachy pink. Um, that's a shade, I really like that shade a lot. So these retail for $90, I believe it is, and they are available at boutiques right now. So they'll be in stores soon, but right now you can get them from one of the Tom Ford boutiques. Moving on to the YSL, this is one of their mono shadows. This is a Satin Crush formula, and this is part of the holiday collection. And I have to say it's very silky. It looks great in the pan. It's still a gray, but it definitely is a taupe. So you can see putting that out, you've got kind of that gray overtone there, but look at the edges. You can see that warmer brown peeking through. So it's going to be a taupe that is more cooler in tone and it's obviously gonna lean gray. So this shade is called Unconforming Taupe and it's number 28. I really like this shade. I like this formula. It's very silky, very smooth, very finely milled. And I would like to try more of these. So I'm still waiting for the other holiday shades to pop up. I haven't seen those. I haven't checked that recently, but yeah, uh, I would definitely like to try more of these. Those are really nice. All right, so next we have the Guerlain Eye Pencils. So these are the new ones that have come out. I've been using these since they came out, actually. Uh, yeah, I've been using the green ones since then. This one is shade three, night blue. 
These go on super silky smooth, very creamy, but they really do last very well. So I actually put some in the waterline, which is something I very rarely do because my eyes are incredibly sensitive. I have had you know LASIK a couple times and honestly it really did increase my sensitivity. So I usually don't use things too close to the eye. And I have to say, I have had very good experience with using these in the waterline and closer to the eye. The other shade I have here is number five, Jungle Green. And this is gonna be more of your like golden olive. So these are the two shades I have. And I would definitely pick up more of these. You can see that the green has a little bit of a metallic sheen to it. No real like glitter or anything, but it does have a little bit of of metallic vibe, whereas the night night blue is gonna be more of your matte navy shade. Let's just look at a couple of comparisons with that. All right, so just a few comparisons here. Let's start off with the blues. This is the Chanel Cielo Ya in number 30, Marine. Let's put that right here. And you can see Marine is gonna be a lot lighter in color. And this is the Victoria Beckham in navy, navy noir rather. And you can see that that's gonna be a little bit deeper. It's just more velvety in general. These don't set as well as the Guerlain though. And I would say the Victoria Beckham is slightly creamier, but uh, you know, the Guerlain is so creamy that in my opinion, you know, I, I'd say this is a little creamier, but it's more emollient in general. It doesn't really set as well, at least for me. Whereas the Guerlain kind of strikes that balance more like the Sisley Fido Cold Star, which I really love. And speaking of Sisley, this is the Sisley in Matte Peacock number five. This color really doesn't go. You can see it's got more teal in it, but formula wise, I feel like these are much more similar. As for greens, we have the Chantecaille Olive Brocade. This is one of my favorites, but you can see this one actually has gold glitter. It's gonna be a little bit more vibrant, whereas the Guerlain is almost a sage green by contrast. And then we have Olive from Victoria Beckham, which is going to be matte, but it's, well, not matte, but there it's like satin, sorry. But it's more of a forest green in comparison. And then the Sisley in matte jungle here, that's gonna be much deeper as well. And this one has, a, it's more green, a little bit less teal than the Victoria Beckham. For mascara and brows, I use the Cure Weiss I'm Possible Mascara. This is refillable. And I have to say, I still absolutely love this mascara. It's one of my go-tos. This is a refill I'm using because I have used one up already and I will purchase it again. I also used the Gucci Pencil in 01 taupe. This is a go-to pencil. I've been really using up more of my gels recently, so just wanted to have a change of pace, but this is a great product. I would buy it again. The Givenchy brow pencil is pretty similar, uh, but I have to say I prefer the Givenchy just slightly more because I feel like it's a little bit less powdery, whereas this, you can kind of brush it away, and the Givenchy, I think, just stays slightly better, but honestly, they're almost exactly identical. I would buy either one of them again. It's really more about which color is gonna work best. And then for lips, we went with Triumphant Tawny, and let's just put this right here. This is Triumphant Tawny. You can see that it's gonna be a peachy nude, leaning more with the brownish nudes with a touch of peach. I think it's a really beautiful, like everyday kind of shade definitely has that soft brown look to it that's so popular popular with this fall. And let me show you the lip liner. So I paired this with the Chanel Nude Brun Lip Liner, which is essentially a deeper version of Tantalizing Tawny. So you can see there's a little bit more brown in here, but honestly, they both have a little bit of that peachy pink look to it. It's just the Chanel is significantly darker. All right, so for me, my top three products that I use today, I'm excluding this Clay de Peau foundation only because I wanna wear this more before I really get a true feeling for it because I really like it, but it's incredibly expensive. So I don't know for me whether or not, 
you know, I haven't decided yet on the value of that to me, my, my personal feeling of its value. So I can't put that in the top three, but I do really like it. And I have to say if it were uh, definitely a more moderately priced uh, foundation, that would definitely be included in my top three today. But since we're excluding that, my top three would be the Tom Ford Shane Illuminate Highlighter in Peach Light. Really love that light shade. The Guerlain Eyeliner eyeliners, which are a new favorite formula. I really like them. And then the third thing would be the YSL Unconforming Taupe. Really love this color. And I'm definitely gonna be wearing this more. I think most of the time I'll put on a light wash, a light base first, and then use this more on the mobile lid and not necessarily use it as a one and done. Get something a little bit lighter even. I think this would pair very well with the Chantecaille Cheetah shade. And you know what, before we go, let's just swatch something with this. This is the Chantecaille Elephant shade. And I have to say this is one of my favorites, but this is a taupe as well. So I just want to see how those kind of go together. You can see that the Chantecaille is gonna be, is a thinner formula. It, has a lot of sparkle, a lot of shimmer, but you can feel this, it's smooth, but it's a metallic feeling, whereas this is more of a silky feeling. And the Chantecaille has a lot more brown in it. It's more of a truer taupe than the YSL, which is more gray-based. So that's kind of how they compare, but I think that this shade will look beautiful with Cheetah. So just to put these together, here is Cheetah. It's just gonna be, you know, kind of your light champagne kind of shade. I think the two of those will look beautiful together. I really like Cheetah and Elephant together. So yeah, kind of a, a great duo. So thank you so much for tuning in and let me know if you've tried any of these, what your thoughts are on these products. I'd love to know what you're thinking. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe and share if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.